Welcome, welcome, welcome back. All right, thanks for I watching. You, I thought you were going to make some smart-ass comment about nope. the uh Very anime. normal. What, what are you thinking of me? Is this clown? Like, I used to do the intros, but then you, for this season, started doing them so yeah. you could ridicule me I'm for not having right now. Intro. Well, that's only last episode and the episode before. All right, third time's a but charm. You... Now, it's, now it's okay. But you okay. just ridicule yourself, technically, so I guess I still win in that. So that's three times in a row, I guess. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know you about that. You tricked yourself. Reverse you psychology. You're a dickhead, anyway. Yeah. Welcome to DuckCast episode 83. This will be our final episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what, what, what if Despite we just, like, what the Majora's I, Mask intro would say, yeah. it's, it's, this is the final one. <laughs> what if, like, just out of nowhere, like, we just ignore episode 100, but treat episode 83 as, like, the big milestone? It's a bit random. Uh, it'd be pretty random. I'd say, yeah. Pretty, Pretty ha ha low random. All right. So Great what is stuff. there to talk about? I don't know. I mean, it's been less than a week since we uh, recorded the last yeah. one. So, it, which is which is really rare to happen. We usually take very long breaks in between. Yeah, and I I, I like I like it when we do it every week. Uh, but and there are like there are instances throughout the show's history where we do it every week. The the, but the thing the problem about yeah, that though is, up. and I'm worried about this one because I don't really have that many notes myself or if any, except for the movie recommendation, is, uh, you know, there aren't too many things to talk about when it's, you haven't, uh, when you haven't, like, taken time for yourself, enough time, like, over a week. I feel like there's always something to talk about. I feel yeah. like we always find something. I don't think that there's... Around this time of the year, I don't know, it's very dry. I don't know. I feel like we normally find something to talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't actually have a lot of notes aside from the movie notes, though. But I'm, I don't know how much conversation we're going to get out of the movies. It depends. Mm -hmm. I definitely have a ton to say about both of them. I don't know about you, but uh, we'll get to that. Um, you know, we have uh, just as a heads up for anyone who is listening. We have Matt Presents coming on next week. So there's going to be th and he actually wants to be part of the movie discussion for normally for guest episodes. We cut the movie discussion. So we're going to have three movie recommendations, and I guess we'll say them at the end of this episode, even yeah. though we all know what they are. Um, so yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting. Like I feel like most of next episode will be the have to be the movie discussion, because we have a third person talking about it. That third person is going to be a guest that has a lot to say about it, and we have an extra movie. So I feel like that's going to be like the whole episode next week. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know though. I don't even. I don't even know if it'll be next week. We'll see. Um, my only note for this episode is just I wanted to try to make a point again that I failed to make last episode. <laughs> we were talking about Steven Universe and other shows. Uh, I, th I think your example was Power Rangers, and just how like we like them, but they do some stupid shit sometimes. Mm -hmm. I my exact quote is: "It feels like they are sometimes taking notes from Barney." Yeah. Um, I think I, I found like what I was trying to say because I said it was like basically a joke, and uh, you disagreed a little bit there. What, what more? What I'm trying to say with that though, I'm just saying it's okay. I, I hope I'm. This isn't. Maybe I did get my point across. I don't know. I might just be repeating myself. But what I was trying to say is that it's okay to like something, but also think it's really stupid. That doesn't mean there's nothing of quality. I think you to even said that exactly. In the last Did episode, I, say that? I think so. Like you're saying it right uh, now, I'm getting like deja vu. I'm looking at our like I'm just looking at our gaming channel, me and Brent's gaming channel, Shanana Pals, and we did Sonic Adventure Two, which I really like but think is stupid as hell. And Brent is now doing Kingdom Hearts on there, which he thinks is stupid as hell, but he really likes. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm repeating myself. I'm sorry. Um, so this is going to be a weak episode. <laughs> Exactly. What is there to talk about? I, I didn't even like. I didn't. Even, I didn't come prepared, except for that I like came super prepared for the movie you, discussion. Well, here's one thing. It's not even out yet, but like that. Did you hear, ever hear about the movie Jojo Rabbit? That new Taika Taika Waititi movie. Hear about that. Yeah. Did yeah. you see a trailer? The second trailer's out now too. No, I didn't see a trailer. Oh, but I've heard there, it. it's 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 great. I I highly I would highly recommend. I wish you saw them so we could talk about them, but like, I, yeah. It looks great. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I actually only heard of it because it was on trending on mm -hmm. YouTube and our good buddy. I really don't well, want to even say much because you haven't trailer. seen the trailer yet. I'd say go yeah. into it fresh. Sure. Do you know who the director is? Yeah, Taika Waititi. He's the guy who uh, directed uh, Thor Ragnarok. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah I like 
with that guy. He also directed the movie Boy, which I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. I'm so sorry. We this is going to be an episode ten right here, uh, unless we save it. Um, in my defense, in my defense, uh, uh, I even brought up the fact that it's, it, there hasn't been enough time for enough topics to accumulate. You brought that up when we started recording. You didn't say that beforehand. I said it during the recording, too. I, I, I know that. I'm yeah. saying you said it during this recording. You didn't say it before we started recording. Let's not get into an argument about something that's really pointless. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> oh, alrighty. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> and honestly delete this and delay it it's honestly fine or you, we can keep going no we're gonna keep going okay, we're gonna keep it, going. it we're gonna save it you know what we gotta we gotta bring up that uh we gotta our yeah. closing segment now has to be our emergency yeah this all right i'm gonna bring it up i'm gonna bring it okay you can cut out i, some I can of stuff. i can i can pull up the 51st states thing again that i did on metal mouth we could bring it back for this what are you talking about are you trying to every time i had a new guest on i would i would be like asking them questions like hey like trying to pick them up or something like a first you know thing. what the website pisses me off because sometimes it asks like really dark and philosophical questions mm-hmm. and the question i got today is what would be the hat to end all hats what could you wear on your head that would make people stop what they are doing and stare at in awe and amazement oh, so man. fuck whoever came up with that question something we're gonna do another fun, one I'm, I'm sure um, when was the last time you laughed so hard you cried? I don't remember. Um, I saw a picture that said rat is short for Raphew. Um, so that was probably my answer for that. Is it more important to help yourself, help your family, help your society, or help the world? That's a stupid question. Help it's, yourself. It's nothing that you can get into a whole conversation about either. Whoever came up with that question, man, it's... Right, that one's too long. That's like mm-hmm. a paragraph. Yeah. That one's stupid. What is the most disgusting habit? Some I should just delay have. this episode till uh, April Fool's. If you choose one celebrity, <laughs> disappear from the spotlight. Which celebrity would you choose and why? We got to talk shit right now. What was that question again? Like, just basically make a celebrity disappear. That's for him. <laughs> I never met them. Why would I want to seek harm onto them? Yeah, I don't know. I don't Jesus. know. The person who made that up is a psychopath. Yeah. Sociopath. What a horrible person. I saw a movie recently. I don't even know if you've ever seen that. I might recommend it someday if you haven't. But, uh, oh, what is it? American Psycho. I have seen American Psycho. That okay. was actually funny. I saw that recently. I really movie. liked it. It's a good movie. I haven't seen it in quite a while. Um, and I know that when I saw it, I was even a little confused by the end and, uh, cause I was, yeah, I was pretty young when I saw it. And then my brother kind of explained a lot of it to me so and that made me, it was all in it. his head that he did all these killings, but he wants to kill people since I that think... one guy's alive. That was confirmed by the lawyer in the final act. Like, yeah, I saw him 10 days ago. He said possibly I, I what I, from my understanding, what it was all about is it was just he did it and he got away with it completely because they were just mistaken. Like, they weren't even aware of, like, who died in the situation. Like, they were all so self-obsessed that they didn't even realize what was going on. But it has been a while since I've seen it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just really liked it. It was the first role, I'm pretty sure, the first other role that, other than Batman and Bruce Wayne, that I've seen from Christian Bale. And, uh, you yeah, know, it was really neat to see him like this. Yeah. Christian Bale has a couple of other really great performances, like in The Prestige, for example. He's really good in that. I'm looking forward to seeing him in that Ford versus uh, Ferrari movie with Matt Damon. What's that again? Like, who, who's directing that? I don't know. John Berthnell's in it, too. It's just, a you know, some race car movie, but looks mm. interesting. Yeah. Matt Damon. I mean, that's a plus. Yeah, like Matt Damon, some of the stuff I've seen him in. I know, like, The Departed was the big one. That was like, was that your first recommendation for me ever? I think I it know. was. I know it was one of the best ones. That, that The movie's really great. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was actually the first one. I know the first one I gave you was Internal Sunshine. Mm-hmm. Can't remember what you gave me. I know you gave me The Informant really early on. I think it was The Departed that you gave me. 
other than Jojo Rabbit and that Ford vs. Ferrari movie, like, what other movies are coming out? Because I know there are a bunch that I'm um, planning to up, see it, on because I know they're probably going to show up at, like, the Oscars or something. And I gotta be prepared, of course, not be the one that's only seen one of the films at the Oscars. <laughs> once got in, we got Once Upon a Time. I feel like there's a chance once upon that a time, yeah, that I've seen. That might, that might get some Oscar buzz. Uh, Hustlers right now is apparently one that's, like, getting a lot of talk. It does not... It does not look like something I will enjoy, but I, uh, I might give it a chance. Even Chris Stuckman, who's like the nicest film reviewer ever, he gave it like a C plus. There's this guy who gets recommended to me. I'm not subscribed to him, but he had this video where he was talking about films that were probably gonna see at the Oscars, and I know he had a bunch in his thumbnail. Let me just see if I can refresh my memory here. The Oscars last year were really rough. Oh, that um, uh, that's a. Uh, Wonderful Time in the Neighborhood, the Fred Rogers movie with Tom Hanks. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. In that. There was a documentary about him. I want to see that, that too. Yeah. For for last year. What a badass a... Fred Rogers, by the way. Just putting it <laughs> out there. Tom Hanks is a oh, very Joker. Beloved... That's probably going to be at the Oscars. I don't know about that. Maybe Hanks, they're making it very artisticy. You know. Yeah. I mean, apparently it does. From what I'm hearing, it doesn't suck. So, yeah. when is it coming up? Uh, uh, I don't know, but like some people have seen it. Uh-huh. Um, there's been some early press reviews of it. I've I heard think some skepticism too. Like I remember, uh, I was at Publix a few months ago, and like the bagger, this younger dude, we were talking about it, and he was, he didn't, he wasn't interested in it, just because yeah, like, not uh, the right kind of joker that he wanted or something. <clears throat> I don't know. Some, I'm optimistic. Some people, I'm like, I feel like it's like, a, it's just another different take on the Joker. Like, mm-hmm. it's not really what the character is. I, I, I like the idea, though, of like taking away the character of the Joker, like the past of the history of the character. It's it's a movie about how society kind of breaks a singular person down into this psychopathic state. Yeah, just but I feel like the Dark Knight did that already. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm not excited for it, but I, it, it, you know, Walking Phoenix is an amazing actor, and uh, I'm looking forward to see what they do with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I, I just contradicted myself. I, I'll see what they do with it. I should say. Yeah. And I'm not. I, I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. People are saying, like I said, decent things about it. Um, I'm not a big Batman or Joker fan, so that that part doesn't really have an impact on me, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, it Chapter Two just came out. I know you won't you won't be seeing that one. I will be. Um, the Lego Movie Two will probably be nominated for Best Animated Picture. Probably won't win. What is Disney putting this out this year in terms of animation? What if they had anything? I mean, they're they at uh, what was it Disney Expo Disney whatever they uh, talked about Frozen Two a bit. So I mean, that's going to be coming. Right? Is that is that this year or next this year? year? Like end is of it next this year? year? I don't know. I mean, we only have one trailer. It's, it's, I don't know. It could possibly yeah, be this year. Frozen, it's still time to put out a second and third trailer, I'd say. Lion King will probably get something, even though it probably doesn't deserve it. I, I love John Favreau, but like that and the Jungle Book, like I didn't like them at all. When's Frozen Two coming out? Frozen Two is a 2019 movie, so okay. it will probably win. <laughs> maybe I mean they, you never know. It probably it'll probably. I mean win. visually, Disney I mean it looks like they they're amping it up a bit from the last. Disney movie. gives themselves the uh, best picture animated, like mm. they give themselves the animation award. I mean, technically Spider Verse was Sony, but mm-hmm. at the time, at least Spider Man was part of the MCU, so it helped. It, it was like it helped them too. It, like seriously, I'm, I'm hearing like another rumor now, like Sony's offering thirty percent. But only Venom's in the MCU now, so I don't know. Like a never-ending <laughs> giving people hope. Yeah, but you, we'll take thirty percent, but you get fucking Venom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still shocked when I read comments of people being like, "Oh my god, that Venom movie was so good." Yes, Tom Hardy's Venom. Yes, like listen, Tom Hardy was fine as Eddie Brock. He was, he was fine. But the character who how he was written in the film like I don't know just poor dialogue for the whole film and it's like you just translate that over you can't really fix it I feel like 
you kind of have that bad taste in your mouth from the first one. That's just my opinion. Plus, I'd like to see Kevin Feige do his own version of Venom, because him being forced to, like, bring in this other version that someone else made, and he likes to have keep it his own thing, and first time that's going to be happening yeah. in the MCU if that happens, so it's going to be a bit messy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I feel like I, like I said, like I, I like Endgame. I'm not too worried about the MCU. Maybe eventually, but I wasn't into the MCU when they first started it. So maybe like it'll be just like that again. Like mm -hmm. once there's actually shit to see, then I'll get reinvested. I'm excited um, about that Shang Chi movie. It's something new. This Bruce Lee kind of guy. If Bruce Lee was in the MCU, that's my only reference. I guess Jackie Chan too. Maybe I'm racist for just thinking of Asian people. I guess, but they're badass sure. people. That's the that's the positive yeah. point I'm trying to make, but anyway. Gotcha. Looks, looks nice. um, yeah, I'm trying to think of like other animation stuff this year because I, I mean, like the uh, uh, reason I have my fucking tin foil hat or fucking uh, best picture of anim uh, Disney saying like Disney's gonna get it no matter what, or like they occasionally throw something else out there to like just catch you off guard a little bit, just so you don't think they give it to themselves every year. Mm -hmm. But it's like. You know, Fantastic Mr. Fox didn't get. Uh, I don't know if, he, if it even got nominated, but it didn't win. What's that? Um, I just remember Lego that. Movie it's another Disney it film, but like that anime film with Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't. There's this new animated film uh, from Disney, where it's like magical creatures mixed with in with the modern world. I forget. Oh. The name of it. There's one trailer about it. It's a Pixar movie, right? Yeah. What do you think? Possibly? At the Oscars? Uh, I mean, we've only seen Pixar, one trailer. Yeah. Dude, there really is, like, a weak amount of, like, animation this year. I mean, like... I, I haven't heard of any other than Frozen 2 and that other one. Invader, uh, obviously, like, Invaders oh, and Steven, those should. are good, but they're not going to get nominated because they're it Netflix. Should, totally should, though. Um, well, yeah. I mean, in some aspect. I just like a lot of people don't like want to. Uh, some some retards are saying that. Uh, wow, the R word. Or to my friend, <laughs> uh, are saying that like uh, Netflix is going to be the death of cinema, like Steven Spielberg, for example, because he's retarded. Um, <laughs> I hear te I hear a, a, a thing recently that television is slowly coming back. I mean, yeah, like it. Net Although, Netflix, like, is, Netflix has made it so access accessible to yeah. people. I, I've heard Tim because I talk. I, I argued with Tim about this a little bit. He made a decent point saying he understands where Spielberg is coming from, to the extent like it should at least be playing in some theaters first. Mm -hmm. And I can agree with that. If it's like a movie, yeah, sure, played in some theaters. That's the best way for a film to be experienced. But something going straight to Netflix. I mean, like, that, like last year we got fucking Roma, Buster Scruggs, but Bandersnatch. Like, there was a lot of good shit going on in Netflix. Yeah, a lot of great movies. That they're like they're a lot better than a lot of the bullshit that makes it in theaters. Anyone who says that, like, if it's a Netflix, like Netflix is going to kill the cinema, they're they're you, stupid. People. Well, take this they into consideration too. Not that I'm saying Netflix is horrible or will be horrible, but like the optimism, like that one thing I told you, might be, maybe last episode or the episode before. Like um, the fact that Netflix is cutting some of, uh, a lot some of the budget for its shows, you know, not just uh, throwing out money like it used to. Like it, you get a it, show, you get a show. That meme. It, it's it's gonna hurt that. Uh, Would that hurt the quality? I don't know. It's gonna hurt them that Disney Plus is a thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. That's probably why it's happening. I don't know. We'll see. People have been able to make good stuff on a low budget before. We'll we'll see. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm wishing them well. I like Netflix, and they've never done anything to really anger anger me. In fact, I love them because they keep encouraging stand up comedians to do their damn job. <laughs> the the Dave the recent Dave Chappelle and Bill Burr stand ups. I've seen both of them. I've seen bits and pieces. I've seen like probably almost all of the Dave Chappelle one, not the entire thing. And I've seen the entire Bill Burr one, and it's hilarious. And it's just as edgy as it could fucking be. I've like it's. I've always wanted to get interested in, in watching some Bill Burr stand up because I, I, I hear a lot of great things about him, and the only reference I have of him is Breaking Bad and um, Dave Chappelle. I just yeah. don't really have any interest yeah. in personally. Uh, Dave Chappelle's funny. Um, 
Bill Burr, I would say, like, uh, his new his new special, Paper Tiger, oh, obviously. Oh, I've also seen him on The Chef Show with John Favreau, and he was pretty funny. Yeah, and I think for that, he might he might have some association with the new Star Wars show coming out. The Mandalorian, is he in it? If he is, that's cool. He met, like, he eventually got to know John Favreau. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was on his uh, Chef Show, like I said. Dude, like, this is what the nominations for animation are going to be this year. Like, I, if Frozen 2 actually comes out this year, it's probably going to win. Mm -hmm. I know that I haven't seen the movie yet. It's probably going to win. The animation category is the most predictable category every single year. At the Whether Oscars. or not it's a good film uh, script-wise, I mean, it, it, they're from the trailer, it looks pretty uh, visually They'll probably nominate the Lego Movie too, even though, even though it's not that good. The first one's great, but the second one's I it's think okay. It, I think they should have made the first one the standalone thing to make it stand out more as this unique sort of anime animated uh, film, with the exception yeah. of the Lego Batman Movie. But like, they, you know. yeah, they just completely like did not nom like the Lego Movie did not get nominated. Mm -hmm. Um. And the, I, th I think they'll learn from their mistake and nominate the second one, but the second one won't be the movie that deserved it. Mm -hmm. It's still, it's okay. It's not, I saw it. It's not bad, but it's uh, Ugly Dolls. We're, we're living in a time where Ugly Dolls, because of the lack of animation, Ugly Dolls has a very good chance of getting nominated. Do you know what that is? No. Is it about Ugly Dolls? You, did you ever see these guys pop up in trailers or anything? I don't think so. Wait. No, I don't think so. Yeah, um, I bet they'll. I bet they'll get a nomination. They didn't advertise it that well, I guess. And then there's How to Train Your Dragon, the Hidden World. So I've always uh, wanted to get be... into that series. Yeah, apparently it's a good series. That mm -hmm. one might actually deserve it. Um, I haven't seen any of the How to Train Your Dragon mm -hmm. movies, but maybe eventually. I, I I watched the Kung Fu Panda trilogy. If you guys yeah, I was gonna life. say Kung Fu Panda and How to Train Your Dragon are like those two uh, overlooked ones. You look at the movies that one again. Like, let me see. Well, 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 this is a good. I think we saved this episode. What about like li not animated films, like stuff that we're talking about that's coming out soon and what now, like Once Upon a Time, like stuff that we know is going to be at the Oscars. <sighs> um, Once Upon a Time, I think has a chance. I'm, I'm honest to God, it maybe like, you know, it's for what it's do kind you of think? A controver it's maybe... kind of a controversial film. They might not nominate it. Well, and some, it's not like they just. Uh, give out awards for writing and acting or whatever. You know, there's costume design, there's set design. You know, I feel like that film did a lot. Costume design for one. I think Brad Pitt and DiCrapio. We might, might call him DiCrapio. DiCrapio. This is a running joke. I love him, by the way. I like so many of the movies he does. It's mm -hmm. a stupid running joke in the family. Um, that's not even like valid anymore because the person who made the joke up likes him now. <laughs> <laughs> But still calls him DiCrapio. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I, think, I think they would be f fine choices for best actor from what I've seen this year. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't seen a lot of good stuff this year, but it's the best stuff I've seen this year is the animated stuff. But I haven't like really done a lot of searching. Uh, I have Rocket Man. I'm gonna watch Rocket Man soon. Oh, I never got to see Rocket yeah. Man. Yeah, that's I good. To. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it because apparently, unlike Bohemian Rhapsody. Whenever they do a song, it's like actually treated like a musical number, not just them in a studio recording the song. And that, to me, is a lot more interesting. Apparently, it has like a very dreamlike sequence to the whole thing. I'm looking at the best picture winners for um, every year. So last year, of course, uh, for the animation, um, Spider Verse won last year. Like that, or. That or Isle of Dogs would have been the right choice, so I was happy with that. Uh, 2018, Coco won, and its competition was uh, Ferdinand, that bull movie, and Boss Baby. Boss Baby clearly should have taken it, but uh, 2017, Zootopia, which, what what else was there in 2017? Moana was one. You know, Disney pretty much pumps out all the animated stuff. Not true. Hearing. Not true. Other than Spider Verse, they, they nominate. No, I mean, like, okay, I'm looking at 2016. There's, there's, they don't list them all. For, okay, you know what? I'm trying to find just everything that got nominated because that'd be okay. So 2001. We'll go. We'll go from the very beginning. All right. Let's let's go through the history of animation here. If you Do if it. you're cool. Do it. Do the. Because there's a lot. So the first year, 20 2001. 
it was the 74th Oscars was, was when the animation category got added. And there was only three wow, nominations. Wow, really took that many? Yeah. Wow. But to be fair, there weren't... There, I think animation became more common as the years went by. Really? Um, 2001. I guess 90s, there was a lot of studios pumping out animated films, actually. I don't. Probably, I really don't understand that. That's that's very. You said 2011 is when they started that. 2001. Okay. Still. I, I said 2011 accident. Uh, yeah. Still. Um. There was only three nominations, and it was Shrek, uh, Jimmy Neutron, <laughs> Boy Genius. <laughs> it's it's weird to think. I mean, look, look. Back then, I'm sure it was something new, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, Jimmy Neutron was like, "Whoa, this is you don't see that that often." I mean. Yeah. Just nowadays, looking back at those films, it's like totally... Yeah, the animation's not very good. <laughs> and then Monsters, Inc. What is your prediction on the winner? Um, I mean, just looking from like 2019 back, I mean, Monsters, Inc. Compared to those, uh, comparing those three looked the best. But was... Uh, what, 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 what? Wait, what? Shrek won. Okay, I'd, I'd say that second best, but like... I like Shrek. What, what, what... Even, I'm still even confused about like recent awards for animated films. Like what makes an animated film win like it's an overall film is it the writing is it you know, what have you i think i think it's because all, movie... so all these other films that are nominated it's like all these other departments the animated film is just oh animated film i, never I think that. that the number one rule is it has to be a movie that a family is going to watch because whenever it's an adult animated film that gets nominated like it's there's never been an adult animation film that's one that's still most animated films so how do you still narrow it down like um, I don't know. I think I really do think Disney gives themselves the award most years. Let's keep going through. So mm-hmm. 2002, uh, Spirited Away, Ice Age, Lilo and Stitch, uh, that weird horse movie. That weird horse Star movie. Planet. Was it Spirit Stallion of... It's got to um, be Spirited Away, obviously, right? It, Spirited Away won. Yeah. Fuck, f- fucking should have gone to Ice Age, man. You used the scrat trying to get that acorn. It's good oh, stuff. Boy. Top notch. <laughs> um, I mean, listen, I, I, they probably redeemed it with the other 15 sequels that Ice Age did, right? <laughs> At least one of them yeah. got an award. <laughs> um, two th- <laughs> 2004 is the funniest fucking... What's the lineup? <laughs> All right, well, first 2003, because they're still, okay. like, 2002, they added a lot of movies. Then 2003, 2004, 2005, 2000. So many of these only have three movies. Holy shit. <laughs> All the way up until 2009, there's only three movies for each year. So, okay, 2003, we have Find a Nemo, Brother Bear, and the Triplets of Be- 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 Belleville? Never heard of I don't that. know what that is. What's the Triplets of Belleville? Did Brother Bear get get the uh, the win? No, I think it went to Find a Nemo, yes. I remember Brother Bear. That was a nice movie. I had that I on never... VHS, I think. I just remember the Phil Collins song. Hey, everybody, I'm on my way. Um, <laughs> 2004, 2004, The Incredibles, Shrek 2, and fucking Shark Tale. <laughs> Shark Tale was nominated for an Oscar. <laughs> That's great. Wonderful. And The Incredibles won it. I think Shrek 2 is a better movie. <laughs> but Incredibles isn't hmm. bad. Not undeserving. Hmm. Um, I guess Shrek won one an award, so that's worth something. Uh, the Incredibles the, was pretty unique at the time for Disney or Pixar. I mean, yeah, I like yeah, that. that's true. That's true. It's not. It's a good movie. It, mm-hmm. I'm not like I don't think that's a shame right there. I, obviously, Shark Tale would have been the best, but yeah. Um, 2005, Wallace and Gromit: The Curse of the Were Rabbit, Howl's Moving oh, I remember Castle, that. <laughs> and Tim Burton's Corpse Bride. I haven't seen any of these movies. What do you What do you I've think? I've seen the Wallace and Gromit one. I, I used to love the show as a kid. Um, what, were, yeah. what was the second one? I heard the Bride, Howl's, the Wallace and Gromit. What? Howl's Moving Castle. It's a Miyazaki movie. Probably the Miyazaki one, right? It was Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> okay. 2006 is kind of a weak year. <laughs> it's Happy Feet, Cars, and Monster House. I kind of like Monster House. Monster House, yeah. I, I remember being a bit scared of that film when I was a kid. Yeah. It, I think creepy. Awesome. And that animation, too. I remember that was the first yeah. time I saw the motion capture suits being used yeah. for that animated film. I was like, whoa, what is this? It looks it's so an, real. How'd they do it? And it, was the scenes and... it was a better attempt, and then they kind of fucked up with their future attempts. Um, mm-hmm. Still, at Happy the time, Feet something Feet. new, and it was really interesting yeah. to look at. 
Yeah, they they kind of they kind of made. It. I feel like I they had never made seen it. motion capture like that before at that age. I was blown away. Yeah. Uh, Happy Feet one, um, two thousand seven. I don't know about Happy Feet. Happy I saw it when feet? I was a kid. I don't yeah, know about I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know either. I saw it when I was a kid. I uh-huh. don't really. I, I don't really know what I thought about it. Honestly, I can't even really remember. Wait much a minute! Didn't that film end with a live action ending with real people and stuff? I remember that ending. There, there was some stuff like that. That's the not croc- a fully animated film. Liars! That shouldn't have one at all. The croc, <coughs> the crocodile hunter. I know that was one of like the last things he was involved with before his death. Um, what's his name again? Steve something. Steve. I feel like an asshole for not knowing. Uh, Steve Irwin, probably. Maybe. That was probably it. I'm yeah. Okay. Um, 2007, Ratatouille. What the fuck is that? I know what Ratatouille is, but what... what... Hmm. Whatever the fuck this is, I don't even know how to pronounce that, because I can't read. Per- Persepolis. Persepolis. I guess. Um, And surf, Surf's Up. <laughs> Oh boy, serve so. I remember that chicken, that best friend chicken. I think it was a chicken at least. I saw it when I was a kid, and I liked it as a kid, but like, yeah, probably wasn't a very good movie. There's, I can't even like reference it because I don't even remember. But there's like, I know there's a joke in my family because we've all seen the film that they say from the film. I forget what it is. I'm not. I don't even know. I'm bringing it up. Um. Right two we won, definitely. Oh deserved. yeah, I remember now. There's a line when the fat penguin, the the teacher guy, who's like the veteran, he like he has this one line. It's like I can feel it in my nuggets. I remember that line. Do you think the That's Angry the Birds? Once we get up there, do you think the Angry Birds movie is gonna have a nomination? That masterpiece. If That's there a weren't if there weren't here. enough animated films that came out during that year, then yes. Yeah, there's 2017. The Could, animated films are really yeah. weak. Because like recent years again like it's it's hard for me to like even hear about an animated film coming out it's very rare um 2008 we have 2008 was a strong year oh yeah um it was wally bolt and kung fu panda i mean kung fu panda was the best one bolt i actually like it's oh i only watched it once but i liked it i thought it was cute and uh wally's wally's good too wally's definitely like the first half of Wally is normally what's praised. I don't really remember having an issue with the second half, but uh, but those are good movies. Uh, Kung Fu Panda didn't win. Wally won. I think Kung Fu Panda. Just to go have. with the meme, Wally should not have won. <laughs> it's um, two thousand nine. Oh. There is Up, Coraline, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Princess and the Frog, and The Secret of Kells. Two thousand nine was an awesome movie for animation, but it That's just a I lot feel of like movies. Uh, I but mean, it wasn't up, like some up, great, great movies. Great movies weren't nominated in 2009. Like I think Mary and Max is 2009, and I think that should have won, but it wasn't even nominated. Did Up win? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, I think, is better than Up, but Up is probably the second best on here. I put Coraline underneath Up, um, and then The Princess and the Frog. I never saw Secret yeah. of Kells. I don't even know what that is. Uh, 2010 is Toy Story 3: How to Train Your Dragon and The Illusionist. Uh, what's the illusionist? No idea. Um, can you take a wild guess on which one of those won? Toy Story three, probably. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> they do. They do often give a nomination to a foreign animated film. Mm-hmm. Give them that. Rango is for 2011's Rango, A Cat in Paris, Chico and Rita, Kung Fu Panda two, and Puss in Boots. All of those films, most of them I haven't even seen except for Kung Fu Panda two. And Kung Fu Panda uh, 2 was pretty good. Yeah. Kung Fu Panda, was, I like. Wasn't it the best of the three, I think? I think Kung I like the Man. first one the most, honestly. But, um, like, I think the second one, I like the second one, but I felt like the pacing was kind of weird, I remember. <laughs> like, it almost felt like like the entire, like, middle of the movie felt like a TV show episode to me rather than, like, a big cinematic movie. But then the opening and the closing were really strong. Um, Rango, I started watching one day. And I got out of it because... Oh, it, Ringo is that Johnny Depp iguana movie, right? Visually, I think it's a cool movie. Like, a really Western. cool movie. 
I got uninterested in the plot, though. Like, it just kind of like, oh, okay, they're doing this plot where he's pretending to be something he's not, and then it's going to be revealed, and then the mm-hmm. town's going to be angry at him, but he's going to redeem himself. That's to like, be I fair, mean, kids film. Does that help? Uh, I don't know. It, it means it's a good movie for children, but that, I mean, I don't have to keep mm-hmm. watching it, you know? I don't, I don't owe it a chance anymore. But yeah, you're right. It is a kid's movie. Um, Animation-wise, it's cool, though. It, like, actually, like, there's the scene near the beginning where there's this, like, armadillo talking to him and his entire body, like, got run over with a truck. So you're just seeing, it, like, him lay on the road talk. It's, like, a really neat visual, actually. Mm. It's, like, really dark for a kid's film, too. Um, it's, like, unsettling, but I loved it. Um, maybe I'll watch the whole movie again someday just for, like, the visual side of it. But I, I was not into what they were doing with it story-wise uh kids films are always the best one like there's jokes that you don't realize as a kid and when you when you watch them back in the dull you're like wow this is this was dark always yeah. the best the best of times um 2012 uh brave one so you can tell it wasn't a good year <laughs> oh i, n- I never <laughs> understood why oh, never mind i was about to say why people like the movie i don't even think i've ever heard that People don't really like Brave. What were the, other, really what were the other nominations, first of all? Uh, Frank and Weenie. Uh, okay. Paranorman, which I've heard good things about, but I've yeah. never seen, and I don't even know a lot about it. It kind of looks like stop motion, but it isn't. Yeah, I, I, I know what it is. The Pirate's Band of Misfits. What is that? Is that the VeggieTales thing? No, it isn't. What That's else? the Pirates that don't do anything. I don't think that got I mean, nominated. After hearing all these films, I mean, sure, I haven't seen most of them. I mean, I don't know. I guess Brave. And Wreck-It Ralph, which I, I seen. I don't think it's great. It's okay. Comparing um, it to Brave, though. Are they going by visually? I guess visually I Brave going, is nice. I, I think they're going by the entire film. I'd say wreck Ralph, right? Something new at the time. I don't know. Break is I, I, just a bit sloppy with its synopsis. Paranorman might be something that was good. Um, I don't have an interest in anything there. So 2013, um, Frozen, The Crudes, Despicable Me 2, Ernest and Kelstein, and The Wind Rises, Frozen 1, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2000, I'm going to speed through this because we need to get to more movie discussion. We're going through a lot of time right now. Uh, 2014. We have a lot of time left. Oh, cool. Like 20 uh, minutes, I think. 2014 Big Hero 6, The Box Trolls, How to Train Your Dragon 2, Song of the Sea, and The Tale of Princess Kega. I don't know how to say foreign. I don't know how to say foreign words. I'm I'm stupid. I can't call. You are about to people. say the R word. Wow. I called so many people retarded this episode, and here I am <laughs> showing the irony of that it's statement. Terrible. Oh. Hey, I'm sorry if people don't like me saying that word. I'll stop. Heck you. I'll stop. But I'll never stop saying cunt. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, Big Hero 6 won. I don't think any of those were very interesting movies. 2015, good year for animation films, for some animated films. Um, I, I at least like some of these. Um, Boy in the World is one. And that's on my, that's been on my Netflix watch list forever. I'm interested. It looks it looks weird to me, so I wanted to watch it. Um, it's on Netflix, so it's on my queue. I don't know if I'll ever get mm-hmm. to it. Um, Inside Out, am Anomaly. I, am I stupid for never even knowing could make a queue on Netflix? I, I didn't even know that's watch, an option. Watch list. It's a watch list, but I still yeah. didn't even know that even existed. Yeah, you can Netflix. do that. That's interesting. Um, cool, cool. Um, Inside Out, which me and you talked about a lot in the past, it probably um, won, right? It did win. Anomalisa, which I think is the best movie that came out that year, animation-wise, possibly just all together. It's a beautiful film. If it's ever on Netflix, it's 100% going to be a recommendation for me. Uh, Shaun the Sheep movie. Uh, Olivia talked to I me about... I actually saw Shaun the Sheep in theaters. <laughs> I don't know why. I forget why. Olivia was telling me it's about cute. this one because we did a derailed episode on stop motion. Like, it's movie. clearly a kid's film. It's not for me at all, but it was cute. I can see how kids would like it, you know? I saw a clip in um, one of uh, Ralph the Movie Maker's reviews where he was comparing like good animation to be- uh, to like the Minions movie, and at one point he used a clip from uh, Shaun the Sheep showing how they used visual humor pretty well with no like with no 
the mm-hmm. dialogue and just like they're in like a jail cell or something or a pound and then there's like this yeah. one really creepy dog staring at them I think <laughs> and I, I thought that, that was funny I thought that was funny I um, liked how that was made by the guys who did Wallace and Gromit I had respect for that and when Mar- and when Marnie was here is that it looks is that Miyazaki or is that just some other anime film uh, okay Miyazaki had nothing to do with that one um, I don't know if it was Ghibli or not, but Miyazaki wasn't involved. Uh, 2016, uh, Zootopia, Kubo and the Two Strings, Moana, My Life as a Zucchini, and The Red Turtle. Zootopia won. Moana won that. Zootopia won. It probably deserved it. Mm-hmm. Um, Kubo, I heard, had really great animation, but apparently the story was a little weak. And some of the characters are weak. Like I hear that, like the first act is a lot stronger than the second and third. Like it kind of fell through story wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Moana, I never saw. Oh, you never saw Moana? I mean, it's no. it's not fantastic, but it's it's okay. Maybe eventually I'll see it. I don't know. My little mm-hmm. cousins were a big fan of it. Um, isn't it on Netflix? Is... I think it's on Netflix. Po- possibly. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll watch it eventually. I don't. I don't know. I'm not really Zootopia. I was curious about uh, Moana, mm-hmm. not really, but maybe I'll watch Moana. Um, my life as a zucchini, I did see. I just watched it one day on a car ride. It's, I've never even heard of that, and the name sounds it's fantastic. Stop, it's, it's a stop motion film about an orphan, and <laughs> okay. Like, okay, that's I didn't expect that. All right, it's, it's nothing. I don't know. Like it's, <laughs> it clearly is someone's passion project because it's like. I don't think I, I think this is one of those more, I think this was one of the more obscure ones I'm actually surprised it got nominated um, it's not bad it's not bad it's like innocent but it's just nothing to me it's nothing special <sighs> this um, analysis though I, did, I, I, uh, I didn't expect that with that name that it's great. just like an orphanage it's an entire like orphanage and like the kids there kind of like form a bond and it's yeah. cute and it's nice but it's not really it's not really spectacular. It's like, I don't know, maybe it's a kid. It might, honestly, it might just be a kid's movie. The, the, the opening's kind of fucked up, so maybe not. I don't know. It is also a foreign film, so maybe that's considered, like, okay for kids. Because it's like a French film, but... In my country, this is art. And then The Red Turtle, I don't even know what that is. It's a red turtle. Um, 2017 was the best year for animated movies. <laughs> we have Love and Vincent, Ferdinand. The Breadwinner, Boss Baby, and Coco, which we've 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 caught up because we already talked about 2018. Uh, but yeah, that was a segment. Woo! We saved the episode. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's interesting. Yeah, I thought that was fun. That's fun discussion. Yeah. Maybe we like maybe other episodes if we're ever like running out of uh, if we ever like hit a stump like that again, we'll make it our backup plan to pull up the best pictures just for live yeah. action. Although I'm still apparently- very surprised that pre-2001, for the Oscars, there was an, an animated uh, thing. You know? Yeah. Because, well, I mean, uh, like, stuff, like, in the 90s, like, Lion King came out, imagine that, being at the Oscars, that probably would have won. Yeah. If you we know? ever, uh... All these missed opportunities to be, like, an Academy Award winning movie, The Lion King, on the DVD box art or something. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Beauty and the Beast got nominated for a Best Picture um, before the Animation Award existed, so it's not like animated films weren't acknowledged at all, mm-hmm. but but the animation category was created later on. Uh, it's funny now because, like, in a lot of cases, I'll give 2018 this. They, they It wasn't the case in 2018 because they gave it to the first man, but it's almost like the like Best like Special Effects Award could go to, uh, like, an animated film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a movie that's, like... Uh, you know, like, when when you talk about the special effects in Infinity War, it's, like, it's really good, but it's, it's like, basically animation. It's not just, like, little effects and touches added to the scene. It's, like, just full-blown animation, and there's a ton of it. Mm-hmm. Like, only, ha- only half of what you're seeing on the screen is real, sometimes less than half. How, um, how are we going to do the Oscars this year or next year? Because, like, last year we had to do uh, the YouTube TV thing, and now that's... You know, not an option anymore. We said we were going to think about that for from then to now, and we're already like half of the year over. Well, um, everyone can record their own end. Mm-hmm. Then I could, uh, 
Everyone you said that you said the option of like finding the full thing, but then you're missing out on the commercials and all that when we're talking over them. If that's even a thing we're gonna do. Yeah, I want to do it live. Yeah. Because I'm gonna hear shit. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do. We're gonna figure it out. You know, you watched it on your TV the first mm-hmm. year. You do that again. I have my volume a bunch. I have the full version of Bandicam. I can record everyone's end, but everyone should record their own end too. Um, and I could just get YouTube TV. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I think I'd be willing to pay for a single month of YouTube TV to record the video. Mm-hmm. Um, then I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I'll just use Bandicam again. Like, I, I recorded it the first year and it's bad, but honestly, it's not really any worse than 2018 because things went wrong in 2018 as well. <laughs> for the 2018 Oscars or 2019 Oscars, I guess. I don't freaking know. Um, all right, do you want to get to movie discussion? Sure. All right, so I recommended. Uh, you want to talk about Taxi Driver, Driver first? Which one? Uh, which one do you want to talk about first? I just said Taxi Driver. You want to talk about that first? Oh, uh, sure. Because I saw that yesterday. What did you think of Taxi Driver? I thought the beginning was a bit slow. I thought uh, the ending was a bit confusing for me with the whole, you know, what's that in the mirror? And I don't know. I actually, I, I have a theory about that now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, well, what do you think of the movie as a whole? Like, you you talk. What what do you think this talk about first? Because uh, this is your time. Um, I mean, I I just I don't know. I mean, it was it was interesting seeing Robert De Niro and Jodie Foster this young. I've never seen them this young in a film. Um, mm-hmm. Was Jodie Foster's first film? I mean, she must have been twelve, right? Her character was twelve. She looked very she young, young in this. She was very young, yeah. Might have been her first film, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, they did great. Uh, I think the idea of it was fine. I think technical-wise, there was some problems. You know, like, um, there was one shot in the the first act. He's walking down the sidewalk. And, like, uh, it should have just been one uh, continuous shot, but, like, faded into the same shot, but him closer up, just continuing walking. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. Want to mm-hmm. save time, I guess. Like, it was like one scene he's walking, next scene it's like him drinking out of a thing, then putting it back in his pocket. Although he could have just had him walking down, take it out of his pocket, drink, put it back in. It's like, it was mm-hmm. just. It was weird. You know, it's from 1976, so it's like, of course, but I don't know. It has, uh, on the technical side, some some odd 70s choices for, mm-hmm. for it to it be in the film. I don't know. Cinematography wise, same thing. What, um,. I know I already asked you this. If this is like a hard question to answer, that's a terrible film, but. Oh, no. If this is a hard question to answer, that's like totally acceptable, but I I am going to ask again. Um, What do you think the movie's about? It kind of reminded me a bit of like that synopsis of like what they're doing with the Joker movie a bit, like society kind of tearing one man down, resorting. Like, you know, he sees like he talks about like all the greed and the scum of this city and he becomes that by the end of the film. And I find that yeah. very interesting. I love those kind of films. Um, it was just, you know, just a bit confusing, especially with the ending and him. Oh, he survived. And I don't know. I just I need to know There's things a about of, it, I guess. But There's a couple of interesting theories about the ending. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, the, the, just the world tearing him apart and this breakup that he had that of this of this potential life with a nice girl he could have had and just having that being slipped away and to have that start his downfall found that very interesting and all the little things he was able to do like with the mechanism he made for his arm like really yeah. smart dude at the same time, which is odd because he also said he had very limited uh, school background. Uh, mm-hmm. education so i found found that maybe it, is that out of character for him you think being that smart to make these kind of things and being very well, creative like that or how smart do you think he is i mean i can't do anything like that i couldn't have thought of anything like that and to have it work like as well as it did uh-huh. not There's just a... with the arm thing a bunch of other stuff yeah he's an interesting guy the the number one thing i'll say about him is he is the biggest contradictor ever. Mm. Um, like I, okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. I'm going to try to like, I'm going to try to like keep it down a bit just because one, I don't know if you'd ever consider rewatching this movie again. I went from, I watched it the first time a few months ago and I liked it and I was interested in like looking more into it, like the behind the film. 
And then when I and then I recommended it to you, but to, um, I was like thinking just a few days ago, I'm like, you know, what the hell am I going to talk about when we're talking about this movie? Because I honestly, I don't even know what, I, like, how can I expect Zach to say anything if I can't think of anything to say? Mm-hmm. So I actually rewatched it. Um, often when we do the recommendations, we don't actually rewatch the movies we suggest. Maybe we should, but often we don't. Um, and I got a lot more out of it the same time. And then I even watched like someone's analysis video on it. And I'm going to cr- credit that person right now because I'm going to repeat some stuff he said. The account is called Chriswell. I'll send you a link. You should write a note down. This, is, this should be in the description of this uh, video. Cr- in one word, Chriswell? Yeah. And I think it's C-R-I-S. Well, oh. no way. And it's a really, like, it's a like it's an hour long, like, within two parts. It's an hour long analysis. And it's really good. And it, like, really added, like, gave me some new perspective on the film. Um, that I also got out of watching it a second time. The you, want me thing, to, you want me to recommend the video or the channel? Uh, the video, I'll send you a, a specific link to the video after we record. Um, this movie went from being like what I thought was a good movie to honestly, I think it might actually just be like, in my opinion, like a masterpiece. Um, because there's so much to this guy. And you actually, I think you got like his character down perfectly like it's almost hypocritical he hates all of this stuff but he becomes the very thing he hates Mm -hmm. but he's hypocritical and he contradicts himself throughout the entire movie um it's very it's just very interesting like you there's so many details that this guy goes in this analysis video and i'll name a few but i'll let you see the video i I liked the other contradiction too of him uh supporting that guy's running for president not really caring for him Honestly, he just, I think he cared yes. about him at the time when he was dating the girl who cared yeah. about him. You know what, the, like, one of the biggest ironies of that is, actually? Mm. His first plan is to kill him, but it backfires, it fails, basically. His second plan is to save the girl. But he's not really doing it for her, he's doing it for himself. He wants to kill someone, that is something that he's accepted. I also found um, this movie uh, first, a discussion a- bringer, or bringing up the discussion of uh, gun control. You know, him being very obsessed, like, watching TV with the gun always with him and, like, always practicing with it. You know, he's very obsessed with guns when it, once he gets <laughs> gets his hand on, once hands he, on it. Once he gets his hand on it, and it's it's funny, there's something I actually want to bring up about the two. So many things I want to talk about, but again, I'm going to try to keep it down to a minimum just because maybe eventually we'll rewatch it and then we could have a better discussion on it. But that's completely up to you, obviously. Mm. Um, I think that... Um, well, same with the contradiction, like the oh yeah, the irony is it's like if his like he's considered a hero by the end of the movie because he kills these guys that were holding like you know mm-hmm. holding this girl there. If his first plan would have worked, he would have been seen as the exact opposite. That's interesting. Yeah, it is like um, the thing that I find so interesting about him is like you ever hear of like the motif in film of the unreliable narrator? Like you ever see the movie Unusual Suspects? I think I've heard the name before, but... Okay. Well, basically, it's just, like, the story is coming from someone that you can't really rely on. He has all the aggressions. Um, There's even, like, you know, he has, like, kind of... He has a very negative outlook on the world, and there's some really interesting shots. Like, whenever he's in the shot, it's normally, like, very dark and gritty. There's a scene, like, he's always, like, in the worst parts of the city. He's all... It's always, like, showing the, like, just the ugliness of where he is at whenever he's in the scene. Then there's like shots of, of uh, Brooklyn without him in it that look like everything's nice, bright and colorful because it's like saying his perspective on the world Mm -hmm. isn't an accurate perspective. That's just the way he sees it. I think one of the coolest scenes is, you know, when he goes into the office to ask the, I think her name is Betsy out. Yeah. Um, when the scene starts, this is something that was brought up in the analysis video, by the way, that I'm just completely taking from it. He, um, the scene starts off with just her talking to the other guy in the office and it's very bland. It's like still shot. Um, and then the second that he starts to walk in to the building, it switches over to a handheld shot and starts getting really shaky. Hmm. And it's just because he's a very unstable person. And he thinks he knows what's better for everyone. It's uh, there's just so much to say. That's about That's interesting that. with all the things I said on the technical side of things. That's that's yeah. one aspect that okay, I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can't tell what's real from his perspective too. There's literally scenes you because he kind of has like um 
one other thing mentioned in the analysis that I agree with is it's like he kind of a lot of his hatred seems to kind of be like I don't I'm trying to find the best way to like phrase this um a lot of it comes from like uh a lot of his hatred is almost like racial mm-hmm. like there's a scene where he uses a racial slur um, I mean there's literally a scene where he's staring down a black guy cro- yeah yeah and there's these scenes where he's um where there's like the, this group of black people kind of give him a dirty look without any explanation that's why and I see like it. yeah yeah and like one you know like an interesting thought there is like what if they're not even looking at him that way what if that's mm-hmm. just his perspective because he's always on edge always paranoid one of the most famous shots of the movie is this shot where he pours something into his water and just zooms in on the cup bubbling? Do you remember that shot by any chance? I thought you were going to say the scene at the movie theater where he's doing all these things with his hand or something. I remember saying that a bunch. But uh, I don't even remember the scene you're talking about right now. Well, basically, he just pours something into his water, he's about to drink it, and then he starts staring at the cup. And it's like this really creepy scene, like this really tense, creepy scene. Mm-hmm. And my mom's calling me. Hold on, That's cut this nice. part out. Okay, um, so resetting what I said there, hmm. <laughs> there's that mm-hmm. scene where he's looking at just he pours something into his cup and he's and then he, it starts bubbling. He looks at it and he looks really concerned and it's like this really intense anxiety driven scene, but it doesn't need to be. He literally takes something, he literally takes nothing and makes an issue out of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. He is so paranoid. He sees nothing but negativity in the world around him, and you don't know what he's really thinking. But for some reason, like this cup of water <laughs> where he just poured this thing into it, he has found some reason to make it something creepy, found some reason to create an unsettling situation out of it. Like something's wrong here. And you don't know what it is. Like, you know, what is he thinking? Does he think someone did something to his drink? Does he not think he should drink it? But it's just so. <laughs> so with all this being said, I'm thinking now. So the ending with him looking in the mirror and thinking he saw something is just his paranoia and the whole uh, message really is just this I think a big th- what I like what, that. that's a that's a yeah maybe well um say it say that again uh the ending with the it's just this paranoia and the uh-huh. whole idea of the movie is just a bit talking about paranoia potentially yeah I think it's like a little more than that though Again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. Ex- it's hard to summarize my thoughts on this. This could be a good conversation one day. Watch the video, uh, if you, if you we want. We do have to. to move on to Jackie Brown very quickly yeah. though, because we're run- yeah. running out of time. Um, actually, he's someone who sees the world as a very disgusting place. He sees other people as disgusting people. He hates humanity, um, but he thinks, and he thinks he's completely in the right. Throughout the entire movie, in that mirror, he's looking back at the guests in a seat. And he's looking at them, judging them, doesn't like doesn't just thinks of them like is disgusted by every single one yeah. of them. In that point at the end where he looks at himself and pushes it back right away. Uh he uh he that's the first time he ever looks at himself and I think he doesn't like what he sees, but instead mm-hmm. of accepting it, he just immediately says nope and just keeps driving off doing his thing. Yeah. Um he's given a chance to see who he really is, see the truth, and he just completely rejects it. Like he has he has his view on the world. He thinks the world's a disgusting place, um, but he deliberately chooses to be in the worst places he could be. He got a job as a taxi driver, and he's just going to like the nastiest streets he possibly can. He is subjecting himself, and he's just accepting this is what the world is, and he has to do something about it rather than actually trying to be hopeful for something better. Mm-hmm. It's a very interesting character study. I'd recommend... Uh, watching that uh if you don't want to watch the movie again right away that's fine but i'd recommend watching that uh analysis and i don't think i did a great job explaining it but i hope i went for a few points let me look at my notes real quick still Um, exercising it it's all good yeah there is like going back with like the cinematography there's like a really cool scene you know when he's like buying the gun yeah with the other criminal Mm -hmm. that's like one of the most clean scenes that he's in it's like one of the nice like the one with like the best light in like the most it's the mm-hmm. brightest scene. The camera is is stable. It looks very like nice, and it's when he's talking to another criminal, like someone that you that he's supposed to be discussed with, someone that he's supposed to hate. Mm. Uh, and again, it just kind of shows how big of a hypocrite he is, like just how blind he is to some of these things. Um, but yeah, I I think it's excellent. I'm not ready to give it a ten yet. 
I need it definitely to gives me a new more. view on the movie, though. Make it thinking yeah. it's pretty okay. That yeah, it's a good film. It's a character study more than anything else, and I do think that the main character is the only like super interesting character in the film. But it's like mm -hmm. he's the only one who's supposed to be interesting. He's the only one that has significance in this fucked up it's story. Kind of like America, it's sense. kind of like American Psycho, where almost every single scene is with the main character focused on them. I do kind of get, I do kind of get American Psycho vibes from it. Yeah. Well, I, I just mean like I don't know if you noticed this with American Psycho. With most of the scenes in the in that film, the main character was in every single scene, in almost yeah. every single scene in that film. Like it was almost yeah. like that with this film too. I noticed. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but I really like it. It's like uh, I'm gonna say nine out of ten. I don't mind to a ten out of ten. I'm trying not to be. I'm trying not to be so loose about giving things a ten because I always like to say, "Oh, I like this a lot more than this other thing." I gave a ten out of ten. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to go a little lighter on that now. Uh, like so, the hateful eight, probably a nine. <laughs> so, um, with the limited amount of time that we have, uh, Jackie Brown. What you um, think? I like it. I think out of all the Tarantino movies I've seen so far, it might be the weakest one. Yeah. Um, and Wait, I do really? like it. Um, yeah. And um, honestly, um, I did like I told talked with him and Matt a little bit about it before getting this call. And um, I can at I don't know about Matt. I can at least say Tim. Just like he said, he highly disagrees with me. Mm. Um, so I'm not like you know. There clearly there are people who really love this one. I think like most of Tarantino's movie movies it's just a movie where you're like following a bunch of characters and you got to really like the characters to enjoy the movie i really like um ordell uh samuel jackson's character a lot mm -hmm. i thought he was funny i thought he was an interesting antagonist not one of his strongest characters probably even his weakest out of the uh tarantino movies i've mm -hmm. seen him in um but still good still really interesting still a good sense of humor like a fucked up sense of humor but I mean, I, th I, and I, I there are some like truly shocking scenes with him. Like one of my favorite parts of the movie is when he goes to uh, what's the guy's name? The first guy he bails out his like apartment yeah. and gets him to go like tr gets him to go into the trunk saying this is what we're doing. Like, I, honestly, I, like he sells he sells that friendship so well that I honestly maybe it was obvious to other people, but I honestly did not expect him to pull the trunk open and shoot him a bunch of times. Like, that actually surprised me. I'm like, shit, this is a scary character he's playing right now. Oh, um, I really a, like... What about Jackie Brown? I, I, I There Brown, was a scene when, like, she's talking to him in the dark in her place. And, like, mm -hmm. that was a scene when she started to fight back. I'm like, wow, this character's yeah. badass. And throughout the entire film, Jackie I'm like, whoa, Brown. she's great. I think she's an excellent character, too. I thought she was very entertaining the whole time. She is kind of a badass. She's also very charismatic. You like listening to her talk. She's a very likable person. Mm -hmm. Um, my issue comes from characters like, I, like you know, like Lewis and Max, who get a lot of. Well, Lewis actually doesn't get that much. Like Robert De Niro's character, Lewis, to me felt pointless. Like I feel like you could take him out of the story without it doing anything. I hear you. And Max was important for the story. Uh, that's the uh, bet, like the bail. Yeah. What's the job called? Bail bonder, or yeah, yeah. Um, and he uh. I, I just thought he was like the dullest character, honestly. Like he's not a bad guy. He's I like the not, actor. I like the actor too. It's he's, not. He, he kind of he makes me job. smile when he's whenever he's on screen. I don't know, just that he did a, general. He did a good job, and maybe he'd be a relatable character to a lot of the audience members. Because like his like the only thing with like him, I feel like he's a weaker Tarantino character um, because he's not very expressive, and his whole thing is yeah, I don't really like my job. I've been doing it too tired of it and he wants and he likes this girl that's yeah he's attracted to jackie brown that's those mm -hmm. are his two big character traits he's very agreeable he doesn't talk that much um i just wasn't that interested in him and he gets a lot of time and like um i also think that this movie as a whole like compared to other like other tarantino movies it felt like kind of like on a smaller scale than anything else he's ever mm -hmm. done like Reservoir Dogs, it's a little smaller scale, but it's his first movie, so it kind of has that. Pulp Fiction was a big step up. Uh, I think The Hateful Eight, I don't know, like, the, to me, The Hateful Eight just had so many, every single character except for the ones in the second to last act are so fucking memorable. So fucking memorable. 
Um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I thought they were all really strong. This one, I just it was those two characters I really liked, and everyone mm-hmm. else. That's fair enough. No one's, no one's bad. No one's what, bad. What'd you think of? I told you this before you saw the movie, but like the fact that this film is made in the '90s, but it's filmed like it's a '70s movie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that too. There's a lot of movies that do that, but mm-hmm. I like that. Um, Even with the music and the subtitles are on the screen, and everything. Yeah. yeah. I do like the yeah, and that's a that's a thing that Tarantino likes to do, and it does, I mean you know that adds a little bit of uniqueness to the film for sure. It's really well made. I think there's like this there's this really I don't know there's this really cool shot when um, Jackie Brown and Ordell are in like the apartment when he's kind of going over there to kill him, mm-hmm. um, and it's just like she walks into this like really dark room. And the shot goes on for a really long time, and then she turns the light on, and like just I don't I don't know how to describe it. It's just this long take that I thought was really interesting. The shots the shot starts off. So we talked about this last time too. Quentin Tarantino, he's like the master at making these very entertaining long takes. That, yeah. That uh, there's so many steps. It's like a dance that he just choreographs, and you gotta nail it every time. And and I don't know he. Everyone does a great job. Cinematography, actors, they... Cinematography was great. They nail um, it. Music was good. Music was good. Um, that's actually one thing I forgot to mention about Taxi Driver. I think that score is fucking excellent. Just just wanted to point that out, too. But uh, yeah, this one had really good music. I don't, I don't remember the score too much for this movie, but I like the song selections. Mm-hmm. I like the music. I like that song he keeps listening to every time, like, Max is driving by somewhere. Um, and I think, like... Again, it's just those characters. Like, I didn't get anything out of Ray, like the detective guy, or any yeah, of the other. Yeah, I would have liked to see more from him. Um, it's a waste of I my really, opinion. I just, yeah, I think really that's it. It's just Jackie Brown was a cool character. I liked her a lot. Yeah. Highlight, you know. I mean, this movie is definitely not one of my favorite Quentin Tarantino movies, but I still, yeah. I still enjoyed it a lot. I still you know? enjoyed it too. I, was I don't know if it has um, rewatchability for me. Really. I mean, maybe. I might, I might want to watch it a second time. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely That's want to watch his other movie a second time. Like, I want to see Reservoir Dogs again. I want to see Pulp Fiction again. I want to see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood again. Um, but I'm not so interested in... Uh, nothing about Jackie Brown, to me, screams, see it again. Um, mm. Aside Again, aside from I do really like those two characters a lot. Um, I, I'm trying to think if there was any other characters. There was Melanie and she was she was fine um like it's a it shows it just 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 she almost just feels like a character that's there to show how corrupt of a person ordell is <laughs> there's very limited limited amount of characters in this film there, which is there's good a, it's yeah i get to focus on the right ones i guess i guess so i i i do think that there's with some the exception that, of some that you know probably shouldn't have had as much time as like you said but that's fair enough yeah. Well, Max, Max again, Max works well for the story. I don't really know what you'd cut from him. I just didn't think he was that fun of a character to follow around. I don't think that he was interesting. I don't think he was... I don't think there was much to him, you know? Mm-hmm. I didn't feel like... I didn't even really feel like him and Jackie Brown had that much, like, good chemistry. Like, they do kind of have their moment at the end. Like, they kiss and everything, but it's just, like... I don't know. It didn't, like... Maybe you're supposed to feel that way anyway, because she does re- kind of ditch him anyway. At the I end, just, she didn't really feel like reciprocated. Yeah, but is that like forever, or is that just like a vacation she was going on? Hmm. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's um, it's under. I don't know. Like, I was happy that she got like she got out of it, like she got away with everything. But I wasn't like that invested in them, mm-hmm. and I feel like the movie probably wanted you to be. Uh, I also don't really care for the sequence of when they show the same scene from three different perspectives. Mm-hmm. It felt like kind of a weird place to do that. Like it's just, it's just like near the end of the movie, not even the very end of it. You could have just kept cutting um, for. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I think honestly, you could have made it a lot more if you would have stopped going back. Like I think it'd have been like I think it could have been incredibly intense if you have her like doing the like. Jackie Brown is like walking down the thing, like pretending to freak out, saying that Melanie got away with the bags. Then it sh- cuts to Robert De Niro shooting her. Then yeah. it cuts to the, then it cuts to Max getting away with the money. Like that would have been a way better way to cut that scene. I think I don't really understand what the point of going. Like th- it's not even like they really reveal any new information every single time they cut back. I guess aside from 
uh, from Melanie's point of view, she dies. That's that's like really the only yeah. thing. I also and felt they re- like and that. they really like they just kept every single line that they did in the previous one. Like they could have like cut out a line or two. Like okay, we got we saw this before. We got the gist of it. Like okay, pulling her out says maybe one line or something. Remove the rest and they walk out. You know yeah. stuff like that. It just yeah. narrow it down so then the time isn't uh, at longer than it has to be. Yeah, because again, it didn't like it was. It wasn't like they need to extend the other thing in that scene for sure. It was two hours and thirty minutes long. You could have shortened that a little bit. That would have been a good way to shorten it. I also do have to say, and again, I'm I'm like I do like this movie. I know I'm being kind of negative. I'll I'll think of some stuff I like about it after this. And if you want to say anything else about it, go ahead because I have been talking for a while. I apologize. I probably won't uh, because we got to end this. But uh, well, I. uh, with um, I, I do think them kill like the way he just kills Melanie. That to me felt like like most of the time when Tarantino does something shocking in one of his movies, mm-hmm. I actually do feel like there was a point to it. There was a purpose. To me, it just felt like he was trying to be shocking. I don't think there was like really a point to that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Like what, what like what 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 was the point of that? Like Robert De Niro just gets angry and shoots her. I guess like I guess Robert De Niro's character is kind of unstable. He normally acts calm, but he just did that. But we don't fucking know a lot about this guy, so it's not like it's that exactly. like leaves that much of a mark. Yeah, it's kind of kind of forced. Um, okay, I, I'll shut up. Is there anything else like you want to praise about the movie? No, nothing really to praise. I mean, it's just, it's okay. I just, you know, it's the last uh, Tarantino movie that I know of on Netflix I want to recommend. And I do think it was worth the recommendation. Don't get me wrong. I actually, yeah. re- I do, I do like it. I'm glad I watched it. I think that the first 30 minutes were super entertaining. Like, I was actually really into it the first 30 minutes and it got, um, and then it kind of had its ups yeah. and downs. Um, but I still, I still liked it all the way through and I do like, um, I like the end in aside from like uh, aside from I didn't really feel like I got much out of Max but I like Jackie Brown's end then I'm glad I'm happy I'm happy she got out of it you know I was rooting mm-hmm. for her and they found a satisfying way to do it um, yeah. yeah good well, movie thanks, thanks for probably, listening to us talk about stuff yeah. like we do yeah probably like a 6 or 7 out of 10 for me for Jackie Brown I don't know One yeah of that's fair enough I'd say the same. Uh, <clears throat> um, cool. So uh, next Matt. episode, Matt will be on. And the movie recommendation. So my recommendation yeah. is The Wolf Pack, which is on YouTube for free. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a 2015 documentary about these kids who... Uh, yeah. I, don't even, I won't even say it. They remade yeah. a bunch I, of I, I most likely saw it a few years ago on TV with my really? mom. I remember. I talked about this with you. I, I, I know the story. I've seen the documentary. Maybe it's the same one or it's a completely different one, but I know the story. Um, but I'm still willing to talk about it, of course. It's been a while and I'd like yeah. to get refreshed. You know? Yeah, I, I would I found like the story to... very interesting. It is a very interesting story, and the way that the film is made, I think, is very interesting, mm-hmm. too. Like, a, a good story. A good like a good story for a documentary is nothing if the filmmaker isn't doing a good job telling the story. Yeah. Um, and they did a really good job telling the story. Your recommendation? You want to say it? Is, uh, this one I've been holding off because at one point it was taken off on Netflix and now it's finally back on. Hopefully, uh, won't get taken off when you go to watch it next time. But uh, the Imitation Game, a Benedict Cumberbatch movie, and uh, I personally really liked it. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think you tried to recommend it to me last season, but it got taken down and now it's back up. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. I've never heard that ever happening. They take it off and then they put it back on like a few months later. Like, what's up yeah, with that? Yeah, hi, Melanie. Anyway, see ya. All right, Mike's just going to... Wait, wait, wait. Matt's, Matt's suggested. Oh, right. I'm so sorry. You still recording? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I got distracted my, because my sister just came in. Um, Matt's suggestion is Kicking and Screaming, not the Will Ferrell movie, the 1995 movie. You texted me like the Will Ferrell movie. I've never even heard of Kicking and Screaming, the Will Ferrell version. Oh, uh, there's a, yeah. It's, Which it's, is the it's official name of it. It's, it's underneath the title on the DVD cover, the Will Ferrell version, the subtitle. <laughs> um, Will Ferrell edition. It's just the original movie, but they put Will Ferrell on it. Just, uh, <laughs> They couldn't even hire him on. It's one of those uh, deep fake things where they just have his face on there. Oh. Uh, yeah. Quarter yeah. visual did it. It's a, did a great job. Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, thanks for okay. listening.